so now let's move on to power and this will be the only discussion i will have on power in this course okay it will be a very short discussion maybe two classes or so but nothing more we won't have time for anything more in this course okay so what do i have i have an inverter as usual and my input let's say is switching like this what will happen the output also is going to switch in the opposite polarity right so each time the input goes high what will happen to the capacitor when the input goes high capacitor discharges and each time the input falls the capacitor charges so there is this continuous charging and discharging process that is happening in a digital circuit right and obviously this is going to constitute to some constitute some power okay so we need to now quantify how much of this power is or how much this energy is okay so it turns out that there are three kinds of power or energy that will be involved in cmos circuits one is dynamic power dynamic power is just what i told you input is switching output is switching which means the capacitor is continuously charging or discharging right and this is leading to some power loss okay so it is purely this capacitor charging discharging power that we are talking about when we talk about dynamic power second is switching power right or i don't know what that i forget what the other term is or it's called short circuit power so here in p out my input is rising like this my output will therefore fall like this at some point of this transition between zero and vdd for both input and output my n mos and p mos will start conducting right so clearly as soon as my input crosses vtn it's going to both transistors will start conducting some current that will peak when both of them go into saturation and after vdd plus vtp both of them will shut off again right this is a short circuit power because essentially now there is a sort of a short circuit between the power and ground which otherwise is not there by the way there is no current in steady state it is only in this transition that you have some current like this so for every switching that happens i do have some short circuit power that is burned in the process right we'll quantify this number also the third one is the steady state power which ideally was supposed to be zero because there was no leakage but of course we do now have a reasonably reasonable amount of leakage and therefore we have leakage power as well both of these happen only during switching but this happens in steady state okay so let's start with dynamic power okay so we'll start with actually energy first so 
my let's assume my, my capacitor is now being charged initially it was discharged to ground now i am going to get my input to go low instantaneously okay assume again now we will go back to this instantaneous assumption input is falling instantaneously right which means now there is no question of short circuit power and all that because i have just shut off the other guy other transistor instantaneously only the pmos has some equivalent resistance right this equivalent circuit is like this r equivalent p cl going to vdd and of course my n mos has been cut off so all the current coming from the supply is going entirely into the capacitor for charging right so what is the capacitor current so let's assume by the way that this node voltage is v naught so what is the capacitor current yeah cl into d v naught by dt okay now of course the same current is being drawn from the power supply also correct so how much of power how much of energy is actually delivered by the power supply first of all v into i integrated over time right so the energy from supply e v d d is integral p supply of t into i of t dt from 0 to infinity actually how much of the time it takes so what is v supply of t it is just v d d it is a fixed number right so e v d d is V D D into what is the current C L D V naught by D T into D T. So I will just switch the variable of integration. V naught is going from zero to V D D. Therefore, the net energy that is delivered by the power supply in this charging process is C L into V D D square. Is this energy completely lost? Yeah, so half we will come to, but clearly some of the energy is actually stored in the capacitor because now the capacitor is charged to VDD, right? So, what about the energy in the capacitor? Right, again we can do the same thing V naught into I of T into DT. Right. So, this is basically 0 to V D D V naught into C L D V naught. Right. This is half C L V D D square. Of course, half C V D D squared is the energy stored in the capacitor. Right. Nothing surprising about this. So, the remaining half C V D D squared, where did it go? it dissipated in the PMOS resistance as heat and is lost, right. So, for every switching, for every charging, half C L V D D squared is dissipated in the PMOS transistor. Now what happens in the discharging cycle? Now the input has fallen, instantaneously it again rises, right? So that time the model is my input 
has basically fallen like this and then is rising instantaneously again right in my inverter right so the equivalent model is pmos has been cut off there is an nmos r equivalent of n cl and this vc of 0 minus now is vdd clearly you are going to discharge this capacitor through this to ground and that entire half C VDD squared that was stored in the capacitor after the charging cycle is now lost in the NMOS resistance, right. So, for every discharge, half C is dissipated in the NMOS transistor. The important thing to note is neither this energy for discharging or charging depends on the resistance. It is not a function of R equivalent N or R equivalent of P. Therefore, it does not depend on any of the design parameters of that transistor. Of course, if I now connect one inverter to the next inverter, then the capacitance on this node will depend on the input capacitance of the next gate. So, there yes it does depend on the width of the next transistor, but not on the width of itself, ok. So, this is totally independent of any design parameter of the transistor here, of the inverter here, yes. So, oh, you are saying that uh, its own parasitic capacitances uh, question is do we isolate that somewhere ok you are right in the sense that yeah it does depend on its design parameter W P and W N through the capacitance, but not through the resistance yeah I stand corrected correct ok. So, with that we will stop today's class, in the next class we will continue with the discussion on power, we will cover the short circuit power and leakage power and wind up this module in the next class, okay.